What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to episode 825, baby. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and that little bell. That way you know when stuff's coming down. We talk about all kinds of stuff here. Motorcycles, motorcycle club news, the whole nine yards. So don't forget to subscribe, man. It helps me out. Today we got some stories for you. All hell breaks loose at a clubhouse man four people injured in this one big big story coming out they're going nuts about this one all over the country right now they are talking about all kinds of crazy stuff but we know that's what the media does doesn't we they just get stupid that is their mo stupidity my goodness gracious Plus, we have a biker running for governor up in New Hampshire. Hey, man, he, you know what? He must listen to this show because I always tell people you need to get involved in this process. Bikers always have the muscle when it comes to voting power. Look what happened down in Texas, man. When that Abel Reina stuff was going after uh, the Waco Twin Peaks stuff, Bikers got sick of him, man. They got together, voted his rear end out. Bye-bye. See you later. We will not miss you. So this is an awesome story out of New Hampshire. Also, a pagan uh, was found guilty down in Florida for shooting an outlaw. All kinds of news. Let's get this started. And don't forget, second half of the show with China Dow. Listen on InsaneThrottleTV.com, man. You're going to have some fun. Or you can, get, of course, listen to the replays on all the podcast platforms. Let's hit her, baby. Uh, what do we got here? Granite State News Collaborative, Manchester, uh, what is it, Inklink.com. That is a mouthful, especially for Hollywood. Uh, Concord, New Hampshire. Jay Lewis believes his and his fellow Granite Stater's rights are being infringed upon. It's the chief reason he's running for governor. Man, when you're talking about rights being an infringed, whoo, Second Amendment is the most infringed. I couldn't believe it. At the end of this month, uh, I don't know, the last weekend of September or something, I gotta go do the Illinois Concealed Carry class. It's like 16 hours. Well, hopefully only 12 hours because I got a Utah already. But I figured, okay, let's throw in the Florida one as well. Where the hell is, like, national? Just one national freaking law where you can carry in all the states. It's just amazing, man. The only right you have to pay for has to be the Second Amendment. You don't have to pay for your first or fourth or any of that type of stuff. No, they make you pay for your Second Amendment. I think that's such crap, man, because it's not cheap for an Illinois concealed carry, by the way. Uh, anyway, Jay, the quote, the only way to fix things is to become a boss, he said during an editorial board at Conway Sunday on August 19th. Now, it is funny. He is one of six Republicans seeking to be the party's nominee. The other is incumbent, Chris Sununu. And I hate it in politics that it's all about the money. And I can't even say that the founders didn't want this. You know what? Because they were all rich men any damn way. They didn't want the little people to be in charge of everything. They only wanted landowners. If you don't believe me, go check this out. I know my history on this. So, sad state of affairs that it has to be, you have to have, have millions upon millions just to get noticed. It should be the little people! Anyway, Julian Asiata, Derry Richard McNannan, uh, Thomas Riley and Karen Testerman. There's a lot of women running this year, man. Uh, just like the last two section or uh, election cycles. Then you got Tom Sherman of Rye unopposed on a Democrat ticket. I bet he loves, you know, taking our rights away. Uh, let's see here. Lewis describes himself as the only biker running for governor. Yes, sir. Only biker. 
Come on, bikers. Get in there and frickin' vote for a fellow biker, you ask me. Quote, that's because it's only thing I ride. He arrived at the Sun office on a 1956 Indian with a slew of uh, Lewis signs attached to the seat. Come on, Lewis, man, I'll support you. Insane Throttle has your back. To try to stuff yourself in a car now, it's like being a sardine. You gotta love the old timers, man. Old timers rock and roll. Gotta love it. Uh, he also has another dilemma. He says, when I win, I've got to find a state trooper who would be assigned uh, to his personal protection, willing to ride in the sidebar with me. You gotta love this, man. That's the type of guy you want in the office, man. A no-nonsense, no-BS guy who knows what the little man is going through. So if you're in New, you know, New Hampshire, you got to look at this, man. Well, people not following my constitution explaining why he's running, and people not following my state laws, you've heard of the constitution, right? When Sununu takes an oath to uphold the constitution, you can't pick and choose which ones you want. Very in your face, and that's why I think a lot of people don't like bikers. True blue ones, anyway. Because we take no BS. We're just going to tell you like it is. Where the other ones that run for office, they're a bunch of liars. Come on. You got to admit it. They're a bunch of liars. They tell you what you want to hear. Where here you got Lewis. There he is right there. Got to love the guy. Got to love him. New Hampshire, go vote for him. Anyway, down to the Daytona Beach News Journal. Man convicted of shooting outlaws motorcycle club member outside Froggy Saloon. This is by Frank Hernandez. The incident that may have started because of a t-shirt led to an outlaws motorcycle club member being shot three times and the shooter facing up to life in prison. Nico Perez, 32, of Ormond Beach, was taken into custody and had his bail revoked after a six-person jury found him guilty of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. That's what I never got, man. Why go six? I thought it was supposed to be 12 of your peers. You know, why go for six? Uh, Pierce shot Joseph Moore three times shortly before the 3.20 a.m. January 9th outside of Froggy Saloon. Uh, Daytona Beach police spotted his white Dodge four-door pickup driving away within minutes of the shooting, stopped him, and ordered him out at gunpoint. There's a picture of him right there. Uh, as he exited the vehicle, officers saw that Perez had a knife in his boot and pistol in his waistband, which turned out to be a 9mm pink and black one. <laughs> pink and black. Hey, whatever you want, man. <laughs> pink and black. Now, he did have a valid concealed uh, weapons permit when he was arrested. Uh... Let's see here. Moore 48 was a member of the outlaws, but jurors were not told that earlier in the case. Uh, the judge granted a motion uh, from the assistant state attorney who argued that Moore's affiliation with the outlaws should be excluded because it was irrelevant. It's funny. It's funny. When these prosecutors put the clubs on trial instead of the person, that is messed up. It really is. It's messed up. And then uh, it goes into the Department of Justice lists the other groups, Hells Angels, blah, 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 as criminals, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, anyway, it goes into the rest of how the trial, uh, you know, went. And this might not be, you know, I've seen other reports on this. I don't know if this guy's a pagan or not. So I'm just going to put a correction out there uh, because there's, you know, new stories saying yes, new stories saying no. So we're going to leave that out, issue our correction because uh, we, uh, we, I don't know. 
There's just too many conflicting reports on this one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it just says he was upset, blah, blah, blah. He was angry. He goes home, arms himself to the teeth, comes back with the Glock, with the Beretta, shotgun, uh, and a huge Rambo knife. So, yes, uh, it, this is Daytona Beach News Journal, and I would have to say that I'd have to go with this one other than the other reports. So it's unknown if the guy was a pagan or if he was just some guy out on the street. So until we get more information, we're going to stand with our correction right there because just too many sources, man. Main story here. Main story. Four men injured in drive-by shooting outside of a New York City biker club. Surprised they didn't go ahead and see, uh, say, uh, biker gang. Uh, this out of the New York Post. This is one of the news sources I really like because they're a really, really old publication. And they try to get it right. They really do. Now, there is a picture right here. It's called... Unknown bikers, and I guess it is unknown because I don't know them. Uh, four men were injured in a drive-by outside a motorcycle club that was hosting a party in Brooklyn. Uh, and it would happen on Friday evening. A suspect inside a white sedan opened fire in front of a 223 Russell Street in an industrial section at gunpoint. People started yelling they were wounded, hurt, the witness said. Uh, a 24-year-old man was shot in the arm. 41-year-old was hit in the head. A 30-year-old was struck in the back. And then the fourth victim was shot in the arm, grazed in the head. All the victims were uh, expected to recover. The address is home to a biker club, and a party was underway at the time. Not there, I don't want to see that. Uh, let's see here. About a dozen motorcycles were lined upside the club in the hours after the shooting. Uh, he was riding a city bike when he saw gunfire erupt, this witness. Vehicle, and quote, vehicle behind me started accelerating. I let him pass. He stepped in front here where motorcycles were parked and started firing. And it goes on and on and on. So it looks like it was all hell breaking loose at the Unknown Bikers Clubhouse. Uh, this by Steve Ago, Joe Marino, uh, Larry Salona, and Tina Moore out of the New York Post. We're going to go overseas. And one of the reasons why I'm going to try to include at least one news story from around the world is I'm getting. A lot of requests, especially from Oz and New Zealand, to include some biking news in there. So that's what I'm going to do, is try to include at least one story in the news broadcast. I cannot get all the stories that I want to get into uh, within the time allotment of the segment. So bear with me, I'm going to try to at least get one. Washington or WA Today by Holly Thompson. Mongols, bikies, if you don't know what that is, that's basically one percenters over there. Arrested after violent brawl in Perth South. You're going to see a lot of news stories coming out of Perth. That's one of the hot spots in uh, Australia. Uh, it's like a major city. So, Police have arrested several members, of, uh, several Mongols, bikie gang members. After a violent fight with rival mongrel mob bikies at a licensed premise in per southern suburbs. Now, the mongrel mob is actually a street uh, gang, but they do have some chapters of uh, motorcycle club members. Uh, about 9.30 on uh, the 26th of August, police say a group of 12 mongrel members approached a group of three mongrel mob members outside a venue in Secret Harbor. Get down, I don't want to see you. It was alleged a verbal altercation took place before it broke out into a physical fight. Police said members of the public were also at the venue at the time and witnessed the violence. 
following a series of inquiries, gang crime squad officers executed several search warrants arresting and charging six members of the Mongols over the incident. They had been charged with very offenses, including fighting in public, causing fear, and displaying the insignia of an ident- un- what, identified organization in a public place. You got to remember, there's those huge bikey laws over there where they do not want you to uh, communicate with other fellow ones. They don't want you to show club stuff there. I think it's the stupidest thing in the world because, you know what? Clubs can just go underground and you won't know who anybody is. That's all I have to say about that. Anyway, don't forget, again, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe for me. Get all kinds of stuff over here. We're going to go to the second half of the show with China Dow right now. You to listen to that live on InsaneThrottleTV.com or our Discord server, Rock and Roll. I'll see you on the other side after this music break. Don't forget to go over to our second YouTube channel, Biker Culture with Hollywood. We're going to be talking about everything that's happening in the biker culture. Everything from motorcycle rallies, motorcycles, motorcycle club protocol, the whole nine yards we're going to be talking about over there. So make sure you subscribe and listen to the second part of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem over on InsaneThrottleTV.com or over on our Discord server. Go ahead and watch a couple of these videos. I think you'll like our video library. Everything from A to Z. Rock on! 